Hi, this is John Blyler. I'm the founder of JB Systems, and tonight I'm talking with Shannon Valor, who is the chair of the philosophy department at Santa Clara University in uh, Silicon Valley. And she is also, and help me out here, you're also the president of... Of the Society for Philosophy and Technology. Excellent, excellent. So very apropos. Okay, uh, first of all, um, your talk tonight is uh, titled um, Techno Morality. And uh, one of the things that uh, you bring up is that a lot of folks uh, Musk and, uh, and others, Hawking's, uh, have presented rather a somewhat depressing view of what's going to happen as technology advances. Is that the only view that's possible? Is, is there some other way we perhaps should be looking at this? Sure, thanks. So I think that when people like Hawking and Musk talk about uh, what they call existential risks to humanity, risks to human survival, risks to uh, human well-being on the planet, um, and when they talk about them in the context of AI and other technologies, they're really talking about what might happen, not necessarily what will happen, but what might happen if we don't uh, approach science and technology in the right way. I do think that some of the rhetoric about these risks, especially with respect to AI, are overblown a bit. Um, and I'm not, uh, as I'll say in my talk, I'm not uh, too worried about uh, super intelligent robot overlords taking over humanity or enslaving us. But there are other kinds of risks uh, that technology poses if humans don't develop the kinds of virtues, the kinds of character strengths and moral and intellectual skills that are needed in order to manage the use of science and technology and the power that they deliver wisely and well. So what I will talk about are some of the existential risks that are generated today by some of our past failures to manage our scientific and technical power wisely. We can talk about environmental risks. We can talk about the kinds of risks from nuclear and uh, uh, biological weapons that still persist and so on. So, but does that mean that we have to think about technology as something that's fundamentally a threat to human being? Well, that's certainly a mistake because there are a lot of other existential risks, including natural risks, that science and technology have helped and continue to help us mitigate or lessen. So we can't look at science and technology as uh, fundamentally threats to human flourishing. We have to embrace them. But the question is, how do we do that? And what's the difference between embracing science and technology in a way that endangers our future and embracing science and technology in a way that makes it more likely that we will have a future, a long and flourishing one? And so my talk is basically about the qualities that individuals will need to develop in order to ensure that happier outcome. I like that. That sounds good. And I would think that maybe engineers and scientists might be one of the first people that uh, are groups that need to perhaps adjust the way they're doing things to, to help in that as well. Sure. So uh, one of the things that we think about when we think about the future of employment, for example, is we think about automation and the ways in which a human employment and labor might be threatened in certain contexts. Uh, we think about driverless cars and the uh, and the millions of people who will be out of work if human drivers are not needed. Um, and a lot of people are pushing uh, greater education and career development in the areas of science and technology on the assumption that those are the fields of human employment that are going to be most needed and most valuable in the future, uh, science and engineering. So this is true, but, I, but with an asterisk, with a qualifier, because there's a lot of automation of scientific and engineering practice that's now ramping up. Uh, on her website, she has a picture of a uh, uh, card, for, uh, USB stick for robot emotions. And I was asking what that was about, and you were explaining that it's... Yeah, so uh, there's an organization called uh, 826 National, uh, founded by Dave Eggers. There's uh, one in San Francisco called 826 Valencia. There's one in LA called 826 LA. And they each have an outlet essentially that's a store that sells or displays uh, paraphernalia that uh, excites the imagination because the organization is devoted to promoting creative writing skills among um, young people ages 6 to 18. And so the San Francisco outlet is a, is a pirate store and in LA they have the Echo Park Time Travel Mart which also happens to have a lot of uh, robot paraphernalia. They sell anti-robot fluid. They sell, um, they sell little containers of nanobots that have nothing in them. And they sell uh, USB modules for robot emotions. Okay. So you can purchase one for schadenfreude, purchase one for love, purchase one for anger, and just plug it into your robot and 
voila. It's obviously meant as humor, right. uh, but uh, I was traveling uh, in L.A. and stopped in there, and I couldn't uh, resist taking some of those photos. Um, I wasn't intending to use them for my website, but I have a lot of friends who are uh, roboticists or robot ethicists that I knew would get a kick out of that. So, uh, so yeah, that, I took the photos and thought it was perfect for my website. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. Thanks.